Hi, in this video we would look at how pregnancy tests work. At the end of this video you would appreciate that how the basic principles of antigen antibody interaction is used to test pregnancy. So you are familiar with the pregnancy strip and if you see two bands in the pregnancy strip you might think okay that you are pregnant, right? How does that work? So here you Put your drop of urine and then let the urine flow by capillary action and there are specific zones where you see the band and based on number of bands you think you are pregnant or not pregnant. So how does that really work at molecular level? So this is the focus of today's topic. Looking at the particular pregnancy strip we would see there is a reaction zone, there is a test zone and there is a control zone. And in a little bit time, we would understand the details of all of these. Before that, let's try to understand the basic principle. This is the genitalia of a particular woman. You see the ovary here and the uterine wall. So let's say this woman is pregnant. So there would be implantation, right? Now, inside the... When the embryo is implanted... There is some hormone which is secreted known as human chorionic gonadotropin. Human chorionic gonadotropin is helped to maintain the uterine wall and it is secreted by the early placenta. So human chorionic gonadotropin actually promotes and maintain ma ma and help in maintenance of the corpus luteum. Now corpus luteum is the source of progesterone, right? Human chorionic gonadotropin bind to the receptor on corpus luteum and stimulate it to secrete progesterone. Reinforcing the level of progesterone ensures that the uterine wall does not collapse during pregnancy and really become thick and rich in blood vessels which would really help to nurture the embryo throughout these nine months. So this is the basic take home for this video that a pregnant woman should have human chorionic gonadotropin and a pr woman who is not pregnant, she should not have the human chorionic gonadotropin in her urine, right? So the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin is somehow going to be detected using an antibody and antigen interaction based method. So let's look at it. How does it happen? So here is your reaction zone where you put your urine sample. As the urine sample flows by capillary action, what happens is your antibodies also flow provided this urine sample has some human chorionic gonadotropin which is depicted here as the red blobs they would detect it and they would migrate towards the test site or the test zone right and as they migrate towards the test zone in the test zone there are specific antibodies already present these antibodies which are present in the test zone can also detect human chorionic gonadotropin but they detect a different epitope. So once these HCG anti, so first of all there are HCG antibodies and some dye molecules which can be cleaved by specific enzymes. Now once our antibody which was present in the reaction zone flows with the flow of the urine to this particular region, in this particular case they would be binding to the anti-HCG antibody present in this region because they has the HCG present and that means there would be a enzyme substrate reaction because these blue antibodies that means the anti-HCG antibodies which are present in the reaction zone they have the enzyme associated with them which can cleave these cleavable dye and give a red coloration so this red coloration appears as a band in the strip Okay, now we understand one band. What happens to the, se to the second band? So let's look at it. Now, as the urine flows, some amount of antibodies is always unbound. And that would be flowing to the next zone, which is the control zone. In the control zone, you have some antibody, which is against mouse, FC region. Now, provided your antibody, which was against human chorionic gonadotropin, was raised in mouse, its FC region is actually detected by this anti-mouse antibody. 
and re regardless you have gonadotropin bind to these antibodies or not bound to these antibodies doesn't matter this enzyme would come to a contact with these substrates and would cleave the substrates forming a red band again regardless of hcg present in the urine sample or other not present this particular band in the control zone would always be seen if this band is not seen that means somehow these antibodies are not working or somehow these antibodies has been degraded so the control band is very important to understand whether the pregnancy test is successful or not so now we clearly understand if you have two bands that means it's positive if you have only the control band no test band that means it's a negative test but if you have no control band no test band or let's say you have a test band but no control band that means that particular test something has gone wrong and it's considered as invalid you have to do the test again so after that you would really understand why two bands means positive test for pregnancy and that's why this woman is pretty much excited for her it's a wonderful experience now she should not be that excited and definitely should visit the doctor to consult him because in case of many cancers such as cervical cancers uterine cancers human chorionic gonadotropin can also be found in the urine so if there is no adequate reason for pregnancy so this is a thing to think about so with that we pretty much covered how pregnancy test take place and what are the basis at the level of antigen antibody interaction we also looked at how the test is mostly accurate but sometimes it can give false positive result in case of some cancers or some kind of pathology associated situations so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you and do let me know in the comments how you like my videos and your comment give me so much motivation to make more such animations and these videos signing off thank you